The following urn contains three red balls and three blue balls, but here's the catch. A randomly selected ball, which of course could be either red or blue, will be permanently removed without its color being revealed to anyone. And now, you and I are going to play a little game with the five remaining balls in the urn. On either of our turns, we may draw a ball from the urn at random, note down the color of the ball, and then put it back into the urn. And we're allowed to repeat this process as many times as we'd like, where the goal is to gather enough information as we can in order to confidently predict the color of the ball that was removed from the urn. Okay, let's get started. On your turn, the first ball you draw is a red one. The second ball is also red, and so is the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, and yeah, the sixth. After drawing six red balls in a row, you decide to call it. The ball that was removed from the urn must have been a blue one. Now, on my turn, just to make sure my data is as reliable as possible, I decide to draw a lot more balls. 600, to be exact. And out of these 600 draws, 303 of them ended up being a red ball, while the other 297 a blue ball. Since I drew more red balls than blue ones, then I also predict that the ball that was removed from the urn was a blue one. Now, the question I want to ask is, which one of us, if either, has the stronger empirical evidence to back up their claim? That is, whose results are more mathematically convincing when paired alongside their prediction? Okay, at first glance, it may seem as though your data is more convincing than mine. I mean, 0% of your balls were blue ones, as opposed to my 49.5%. And, to make matters worse, if the removed ball was in fact a blue one, then after 600 draws, the expected number of balls drawn is about 360 red ones and 240 blue ones. And, well, my data doesn't even come close in comparison, with all the extra blue balls that I drew actually working against me and my claim. Alright, that should settle it then. You possess the stronger evidence, right? Well, not really. Believe it or not, the evidence on both ends is in fact equally strong. But wait, how is that even possible? And, well, there's one key detail shared between both sets of data that some of you might have already picked up on. The difference between the number of red and blue balls drawn was the same for both of us. Yep, that's it. That's all it came down to. This difference is exactly what determines the strength of evidence, where the larger the difference is, the more reliable the evidence becomes. But why is that? Well, imagine drawing your first ball from the urn, and it's a blue one. You're probably thinking, okay, cool, it's likely that there are more blue balls in the urn than red ones. In other words, the draw was a useful one, providing a tiny bit of insight on the possible color of the removed ball. Now, imagine for your second draw, you get a red ball. Well, now you've drawn one red ball and one blue one, and together, this information reveals nothing about what the balls in the urn look like, essentially taking you back to square one. And the same can be said if you drew two red balls and two blue ones, or three red balls and three blue ones. In fact, no matter how many balls you end up drawing, we can group every pair of opposite colored balls together and they'll essentially cancel each other out, leaving behind the data that actually matters, the difference. Make sure to check out the full video if you want to see a more in-depth breakdown of this problem.